Hi everyone. In this particular video, we will be learning how we can create the APIs for our algo trading purpose in Delta Exchange. So first, you need to have a trading account in Delta Exchange, which is completely free. If you don't have an account in Delta Exchange, you can find the link to open an account in Delta Exchange in this video's description. Now, once you have opened your account in Delta Exchange, you need to log in with your credentials. Generally, with any of the Gmail ID with which you have signed up in Delta Exchange, you can log in with that particular Gmail ID and then you can navigate to the menu of the profile. So here on the top right hand side, you will see a profile icon. Click on that and after that, you will be able to see a sub menu called as API keys. Click on the API keys and then something of this sort will appear. Now, if you are a first time user, then you will have to do a 2FA setup. Now, how does 2FA setup can be done is this 2FA setup would be required only if you are first time user or if you have logged in first time and if you have not yet enabled 2FA. So when it is the first time that you are trying to activate or create an API, you will be shown this kind of screen where you will be shown a warning 2FA must be enabled for generating an API key. Okay. So once you see this kind of message, you need to click on the setup button. After you click on the setup button, you will be seeing something screen of this kind of thing. Then in this, you need to click on setup button, which is next to the 2FA. Okay. After that, it will ask you to you to download the authenticator app on your mobile. You can either use Microsoft Authenticator or you can use Google Authenticator. I prefer using the Google Authenticator. However, it is mentioned here that we do not advise Google Authenticator, but I personally use Google Authenticator for all my other trading applications. So I prefer using the Google Authenticator for Delta Exchange as well. But it is up to you. You can use the Microsoft Authenticator, LastPass Authenticator or the Google Authenticator, whichever suits you. Okay. After that, once you click on the next option, you will be seen a barcode now this barcode you can scan from your google authenticator app or from any other authenticator app once you scan this particular barcode the account will automatically be added in your mobile authenticator application okay and once the account is added to in your authenticator application you will find six digit numbers which will keep rotating or refreshing every minute on your authenticator app Okay, so that means your authenticator has been configured successfully. Now coming back to the Delta Exchange. So when you come to the Delta Exchange, you click on the next button and it will ask you two things. It will ask you two verification code. One verification code is something which you will receive on your email ID. And the another authentication code is also called as the 2FA code or the authenticator code, which you will have to copy from your authenticator app whether it is a google authenticator or microsoft authenticator and you have to put this too now you have to be a little quick in filling up these two digits because the 2fa code keeps changing every one minute so within one minute you have to uh, copy this code paste it here and you have to click on the submit button so once you click on the submit button your 2fa will get enabled and you will be able to see a screen something which is currently shown on your monitor now once your 2FA is configured, you can come to the API section and here you can create a new API key. Okay. Now here uh, you will have, you will see the name of the account for which you are trying to create an API key. Here you have to mention the API key name. For example, I mentioned the name as test. Here is the whitelisted IP. Now whitelisted IP is the IP address of the server or the host from where you are trying to run your algo program. So if you have developed your own algo program, you need to mention your IP address. If you are using someone else algo program, you need to take the IP address from that particular person and enter it here. In the permissions, you need to select the appropriate permission. If you are creating the API only for reading the data, then you, you need to just tick on the read data option. But if you are using the API, if you are creating the API for the trading purposes as well, that is for the algo trading then in that case you need to select the trading option as well and here let's say i will write 100.0.0.1 so this is some temporary random ip address which i have mentioned but uh, just get it verified from the person for whose algo you are trying to use okay and then you need to click on the create api so once you click on the create api it will reflect in the table which is just below it and here you will see the different api keys that you have created so as of now you can see i have already created one api key in the name of futures trading where this is the api key and there is some secret key 
okay so once that is done you need to copy your api key and secret key you need to save it in your personal location because once the api is created you will not be able to see the secret key again so once so whenever on the screen you are able to see the api key and the secret key copy both of them save it somewhere on your local machine and then whenever required you can share the api key and secret key now also one more important thing that you need to understand is that the api key and the secret key are like your trading accounts username and password so if anyone who has access to your api key and the secret key can place orders in your trading account now the important thing again is the whitelisted ip address so if you provide whitelisted ip address then only that particular person or that particular system or the software can place the orders on behalf of you in your trading account let's say if you have shared your api key and secret key with a software vendor or any algo trader vendor and later on if you wish to discontinue it there are two ways one is you can delete that particular api key or you can go to the edit option of that api key and change the whitelist ip address so this is how you can create your api key that's it for this particular video i saurabh gandhi signing off from this video hope to see you in next video with some other topic thank you